I know this is a C-sharp playlist, but you're going to have to forgive me for opening up a Visual Studio example in the C-sharp playlist, because I think it will actually drive home some concepts showing you how static works inside of C++ and then blend that back over to C-sharp. And then I can tell you about static classes, which, well, yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, first of all, ignore all this stuff. It's kind of like our using statements in C-sharp, but not exactly. Just kind of deal with it. I want to do some file streaming, and then this look, should look familiar. We have our main, and we have void out here. If you know C++, I'm going to do a lot of things that will tear your gut inside out. All right, I'm simply trying to make an example here. I do not want to get all, into all the nuances of C++ and perfect programming and that sort of thing. I want to make a system that will allow us to do some logging to a text file. Okay, any large program, I remember back when I was doing some telephone software, I was the log saved me. I'd ship my program off to a server and it would run and they'd say it's not working correctly and they'd give me back the log files and I could look through the log files and see what happened. So let's make a little logging system here in C++ and I want it to be global, meaning wherever I'm at, no matter how I want to do it, I want to use this logging system. Okay, now depending on how hardcore I am, I, there's various ways I could do this. I'm going to do this probably the C-ish kind of way of doing it. I'm, I'm just going to do some global variables and some global functions. So let's do it. Fstream, that's a type, it's a class type in C++ that says, hey, I want to I want to be able to write a file. I'll call it outstream, like so. And then every time I log something, I want to keep track of what line number I'm on. So I'm going to say int line number gets zero. Right? Hopefully you're feeling uncomfortable. I'm writing, defining data members, and that's not inside of a class. All right? Don't, don't worry about it. I don't need to go talk to my religious leader after this. This is totally fine. I'm not sinning. Uh, let's see. Void initialize logging. Ooh, there's a function. It's not inside of a class. Don't be scared. Outstream. How about you open, and let's just call it my log dot text. So everything that we write to the logger will go to the simple text file, and we should have a, a corresponding shutdown. So shutdown uh, logging, like so. And when we're done with that, we'll say outstream dot close. Okay, again, please ignore, I should be doing some error checking and all that. I mean, obviously, if I'm opening up a file, if the operating system is not going to allow me access to it, or maybe for whatever reasons I can't open the file, this could certainly fail. I'm ignoring that fact. Let's write a function that allows us to log. So I'm going to say log message, and I'll say string. Uh, we'll just call it message. Okay, you C++ guys, uh, don't throw up. I'm leaving some stuff off here. Don't worry about it. Uh, outstream. Let's send out to the file. Look at that. That's called the stream insertion operator. I'll make it nice and big. Looks like a left shift, doesn't it? It's kind of the same thing. But I'm going to shove into the stream. I want to write out to the file a message. Uh, but before I do the message, I want to uh, write out the line numbers. So let's just, in parentheses, just so it's easier to read, line number plus plus, or I don't want to call it line number. Let's call it log number. That's probably better. Log number plus plus. And then furthermore, let's send out a colon followed by a space. And then I want to further send out the message they're sending me. And then let's tag an end line on the end of that. Please forgive the blast of C++ I'm giving you. Um, don't stress it. The one thing I do want you to notice, though, is I have data out here. Guess what? This data is static. <laughs> the compiler has to define room for this data. And this data, both of these, one the size of an F stream, another the size of an int on my platform. Uh, ha the compiler has to define data. Look at that. I'm saying compiler and static in the same sentence. The compiler defines data in the resulting exe that it will generate from my C++ code here. Then we have these functions. Guess what? These are static functions, meaning I don't really need an object to call them, do I? In fact, <laughs> before there were instance functions, there were static functions. That's all we had. We could just call these static functions. And we have this shared data, and there we go. Now watch this. Let's uh, initialize logging in main. Let's shut down logging in main. But before we shut down, let's, let's write out some message. Log message. I love static data. Log message. Static data. 
exists before and after main log message when I think static I think memory uh, created by the compiler okay I hope that hope that works and uh, let's see all the squiggly's gone good build succeed I'm gonna run this uh, there's no output obviously let me go open up the text file my log dot text hold on for a sec okay it took me a, actually a minute to find it I forgot I had to put an O out here for output file stream but anyway I don't think you're probably coding this up with me anyway here is the log look at this I love static data static data exists before and after main when I think static I think memory that is created by the compiler I should put a that in there so look at that this is nice utility kind of general code I want anywhere available anywhere I only need at once I don't have to create a bunch of loggers I just want to get my logger going my logger code here and and go so there's really no need in this example to have a class okay but but what if I wanted to do something similar to this in C sharp okay what if I wanted to do some logging in C sharp I really don't need a class but in C sharp everything has to be class or struct or forced to be an object or oh what a headache. <sighs> Alright, well let me show you how we do it in C sharp. I'm gonna grab all this code. Actually let's just let's grab all of it. Control A, Control C. Let's go to our C sharp Visual Studio here. And I'm gonna paste C code into C sharp land and obviously we're gonna have some issues here. I'm gonna convert this C sharp code or C code to to C sharp code. Let's let's do just that. First of all, we'll get rid of that. That doesn't have any meaning to us. And then this needs to be a stream writer, like so. And that means I'm going to have to bring in system.io. And I can't have this global data like this. Everything has to be in a class. So let's just say class. What should we call this class? I mean, we could call it anything. I'm just trying to make the C-sharp compiler happy. Maybe, you know, I'm grouping all this stuff according eh, you know, it might make sense to call this a logger. <laughs> Go figure, I got an education somewhere. I'm going to put a closing curly down here. And then the stream writer, out stream, log number is zero. Um, right here we need to say new, gets new stream writer. Look at me converting this C++ like a machine. And then outstream, I think that's just the uppercase C if I remember. Control Shift U, that's the hotkey I hit to uppercase that letter. And then log message, well, yeah, this has no meaning in C sharp. So let's do outstream dot right line parenthesis, and then let's see, log number plus plus. And look at this, we'll just use some good old fashioned string concatenation, even though we. Probably should use string builders instead, but I'm not covering that in this video. And then control KD, let's see if we format. Oh no, we got void main hanging out here. And you know my style, I just say hey, class. Main class, I have to have main in something, so let's just call it main class. All right, but that's kind of nice. I remember coming from C to C sharp saying main has to be inside of a class. All right, it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, the whole reason I'm making this class is so I can put main inside of it. Well, yeah, that's, that's just the rules of the language, right? Even though in C++ land, you know, we don't have to do that hack. You can just have main out here and, and it works. So let's go over here, initialize logging. Well, initialize logging is inside of my logger, right? Let me highlight this and control KF. See if we can format that a little bit. So now I just have to say logger dot on all of this so logger dot and actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna alt drag down and say logger dot and red squigglies are still there oh they need to be public that's right public control C public public look at me making this hardcore C C++ more mostly C style of programming uh, work in C sharp by by just putting it in a class and oh this has to be static too all this stuff needs to be well no it doesn't have to be static actually that's a good point well look at that in the next video um, look at this gonna complain saying hey uh, object reference required for non-static field okay well okay now now we can get back to that static 
Static. I'm going to control C this. That's going to take forever. Static, static, static. See all that static going on here? It's already static out here. Compile time determined static. All right, but I have to be explicit and say static on all this. And, oh, look, now I compile. Control Shift B, build succeeded. Control F5, run it. Black window, let me pull open the text file. I think I can do that just by Control Alt L there. Show all files. Bin, debug, my log.txt. There it is. There's the log again. So maybe that hopefully wasn't too much of a waste of your time, but there you go. Static, long before object oriented programming languages existed. We came to languages like C sharp. And the now we have to be explicit and say, hey, it's all static. Okay. And there you go. Next video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what I've done here and uh, some ways C sharp gives us some support to actually do this correctly.